So, in a previous lesson we have learned how to complete the square. But the question is, how do we use that skill to go from general form to standard form of a circle? And that's what this video is about. Well, this is general form of a circle. We want to put it in standard form, the form that has parentheses, squared the form where we will be able to see what the center is and the radius just by looking at the equation. We're going to use completing the square. Um, in order to complete the square the first thing we need to do is to sort of collect terms that belong together meaning we're going to take the x's and sort of put them together and then we're going to take the y's and put them together. And then we're even going to take the uh, constant term and uh, get that off by itself. Alright, so the x is first. If I just sort of rewrite this, pulling these x terms together, this is going to become uh, x squared plus 8x. Then I'm going to leave space because I'm going to complete the square later. And then I'm switching over to the y's now. Putting the y terms together, this term and this term, that's going to give me y squared minus 6y. And I'm going to leave a space for when I complete the square later. and now the constant term if I add 11 to both sides technically what I'm doing I'm adding 11 to both sides like this <clears throat> those uh, these 11's are going to cancel out and it will leave 11 over here now we are ready to complete the square now do you remember when we want to find the constant term, the third term of this trinomial, how do I choose the number to put right here? Who remembers? Go ahead and blurt it out. Well, hopefully you said we need to take half of the middle and square it. And that's uh, how we know the number that needs to go third. Well, the middle number is 8. so obviously what is half of 8? Right, 4. What do we get when we square that? Of course we get 16. So we're gonna put 16 here to complete the square. Now wait, we just added 16 on the left side of this equation. What do we have to remember to do right away? Well, hopefully you said we also have to add 16 to the right-hand side of the equation. Now, that's a big mistake right there. A lot of times, students will complete the square, find the 16, and just go on with the problem. And they will forget to put 16 on the right side as well. So please, please, please pay special attention. Every time you complete the square, it's going to involve putting a new number on the left side and the right side of the equation. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the y's. What is the number that I'm going to have to put here to complete the square? Hopefully you just said 9. And uh, once again, the reason why we're going to get 9 is we do half the middle squared. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So we're going to add 9 right here. Now immediately, before I forget, I need to also add 9 to the right side of the equation.
okay I added 9 on the left and I also added 9 on the right now please remember that the point of completing the square was when I factor this should factor as the same thing twice and that is really the point of completing the square is to make that happen so if I factor this this is going to factor as x plus 4 times x plus 4 alright anytime we complete the square this is going to factor as the same thing twice okay and this side is going to factor as y minus 3 times y minus 3 now I want you to notice, notice something about the signs when we complete the square the number that we add on the end to complete the square is always positive because anything squared is positive positive 16 positive 9 but yet sometimes inside the parentheses we have a positive and then sometimes we have a negative well how do we know whether it's going to be a positive or negative on the inside well just look at the middle term uh, this is a negative 6 so I'm gonna need a negative 3 y inner and a negative 3 y outer to make that negative 6 um, how is it that I'm still going to get a positive 9 if I have negative 3? Well, because a negative times a negative is a positive, so there's nothing wrong there. Uh, let's go ahead and combine all these numbers over here on the right. If I add all these numbers up, I'm going to get 36. Now, the reason why we wanted to make sure that we had the same thing twice was so we could put them all together in a nice little package and write x plus 4 squared similarly instead of having y minus 3 twice I can write y minus 3 squared okay and right there we have rewritten the equation which started off in standard form uh, excuse me it started off in general form and now we have rewritten it in standard form by completing the square twice. Um, and again, the benefit of this is now we should be able to look at the equation and know what is the center and what is the radius. Okay, when we looked at the original general form equation, uh, it was not obvious at all what the center is and what the radius is but now hopefully you can tell me what is the center of this circle well hopefully you said that the center will be negative four comma positive three and of course I'm getting those numbers from the parentheses right here sort of the opposite of this four negative 4, the opposite of this, negative 3, positive 3. Now, what about the radius? What is the radius of the circle? The radius is going to be 6. Where did I get that? Well, we know that uh, in the standard form of a circle, um, this number here on the end is always 
the radius squared. So the radius must be 6 if the radius squared is 36. I guess you could always also look at this as taking the square root. If I take the square root of this number, it's going to give me the radius. And that's how you convert from general form to standard form by completing the square.